Hey y'all, it's Jessica with Freedom Canine Training. And in this video, I wanted to pop in and tell y'all the process that I have for introducing dogs. So the very first thing that happens uh, when I have a dog come in, if I'm going to assess them with dogs, um, or if I have a foster like Eve and I wanna see what's what after she has, um, after she has um, gotten more comfortable, gained, gained a little confidence. Of course, with her specifically, we wanted her to gain some weight and feel better physically. Um, we'll put training in. So all dogs have at least some foundational stuff, some foundational impul impulse control, excuse me, and the ability for me to communicate with them, um, as well as having established that relationship of trust and respect. So. That is the first thing that I do, and all this time, typically that's about a week to, to two weeks, depending on the dog. And so all this time, these guys aren't meeting. They're not, they don't have play dates. We're not doing any kind of dog park, social, anything like that. What I do is, once I have a dog that will reliably stay on place, we do a lot of community plays together. So they will be in their, on their beds, on cots, whatever it is, um, in the same room for any length of time. And we'll do that for a little bit and then we'll go on structured walks so again we have a foundation of structured walk in place with her foundation of structured walk in place with him and now we are just migrating together again they haven't met nope heel <laughs> she just tried to smell him that is the first time so typically when you first get started that that may be the case where uh, one will be excited and want to get over uh, go over and smell the other dog that's so funny um, but we don't do that yet we're gonna do that all of that kind of stuff off leash so once everybody is uh, pretty much has a good foundation of um, you know this is how you interact with each other we're gonna be calm we're gonna be relaxed no craziness no shenanigans um, and everybody seems to be cool then we will take another walk I do use a second person for this so we'll take another walk and then we'll kind of just go in a small circle um, I mean, by that, you know, think of like a patio size um, circle. So it's not like with tight little circles. But anyway, so we'll go, um, I have so many awesome hawks here. Sorry, just got distracted. So we'll, we'll take a walk and we will allow dog number one to get a little bit closer to dog number two, do a little snippage, and then we will turn around, go in the opposite direction, and let the dog number two reciprocate. So um, everybody gets to do a little bit of smelling on leash. Again, they don't get to meet. And then after that, once everybody is cool, everybody's chill, they seem to be doing okay, then we will remove the leashes. If you use prong collars, please remove those too. But we will remove um, tools for the most part and let them um, meet each other. Uh, again, this is all off leash. We don't want to create any tension, um, any additional tension or stress by trying to pull on the leash, Cappy heel, um, because that can happen. The other thing that I do is I don't have it on me today. Um, I usually take it on my walks, but the other thing that I do is I don't use e-collar corrections during a social like that. I will use it, nope, heel. I will use it if I am um, recalling a dog. So if we recall a dog away and they need a prompt or they need some more information, that's okay. But what we don't want to do is give a correction while they're um, engaging with each other because they can um, think that it was the other dog. And of course, if there's any kind of tension and we're missing our timing on that, then we could make the situation worse. So um, what I do use, like I said, I didn't bring it on my walk today, is a riding crop. Um, I have lunch. Um, lunge whips as well and what I use you can use a chuck it stick too so anything that you can use to extend your reach and what I'll do is if one of the dogs is a little too much if their energy is, is too high um, they're getting a little more amped then I will cut them off from the other dog um, sometimes we'll boop them with it depending on where we are um, but basically we use it as a, a mediator or barrier to kind of stop them from really uh, rushing up to another dog the other thing that you can do if you have a dog that is unsure and insecure and seems to be anxious, that's my guy right here, um, you'll kind of stick close to that dog. Now, you can 
have that dog on a long line if need be, but you want to be very careful and make sure that it is loose and you don't have tension on it. But what I'll do is I'll keep that dog close to me and we will deter the other dogs that are rushing up um, in a rude way. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that's it. Um, that's what I do when I introduce dogs. Um, when it comes to uh, if you are fostering or you have adopted a dog, most likely the rescue or shelter organization has had you um, introduce the dogs and seen how they were together prior. I would say go ahead and put these protocols in place. Um, just calm existence will be your goal for like 30 days. There's nothing wrong with a dog or multiple dogs not engaging and not playing together for 30 days. Let them learn how to properly um, greet each other. Let them learn how to properly uh, manage their energy around each other. So um, just a, a chill, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, being chill and learning how to calmly just exist with each other is really ideal because that will carry out into the play yard when it is time for them to meet and play and do all those good things. So hopefully that was helpful. If y'all have any questions, you need clarity on anything or I can help you with anything else, if I can support or coach you through whatever it is you're going through. My arm is getting tired. I know I haven't even shown my whole face. Y'all reach out, let me know, and I will see y'all later. Love ya. Bye.